Valley to Peak Nutrition Podcast. It is just me this week uh, to touch on a specific topic that recently came up actually in my own training. And I realized within that that it's not something I've ever talked about, but I'm uh, I'm certain that there would be quite a few people interested in it and and at least feel like having the knowledge of, of what the topic is would be valuable to them whenever it comes to their own training and their nutrition. So in, uh, in, in an effort to provide that, let's talk through what does protein needs look like on long endurance training events? So we've talked, I mean, almost ad nauseum about carbohydrate (laughs) replacement, which is good. I think it's necessary. And, um, of course, it's like it is the predominant fuel source for activity, especially high intensity activity, and even more so when intensity starts to swing above 85 percent of the maximum amount of effort that you could uh, possibly muster up. But we've not really talked about protein, and specifically, we've not really talked about number one: is protein needed during long duration events? And if so, at what point does it start to become necessary? So give you a little bit of, of history as to, you know, kind of what led into this topic and why it it popped up recently in my own training. Uh, you've heard Mark and I talk quite a bit about something that we have planned in June. It's definitely going to be a challenge for both of us. Uh, well, I shouldn't speak for him, but for me physically. So it's something I have to put some more, more attention to and prepare for. It's not something I could just go do tomorrow if I hadn't, if I hadn't trained at all in that I have a friend, uh, who works closely with Valley to peak. I actually do a lot of the nutrition consulting for his group. He's, he's focused specifically on preparing backpackers, hikers, and mountaineers for taking on really challenging things in the mountains. And so nutrition, I know very, very well, I can dose it myself. I know just enough on the performance, um, training side of things to be dangerous, but I wouldn't call it my, my wheelhouse, not, not in the way that nutrition is. And so with this being a little more in depth than anything I've ever done before, I reached out to him and said, Hey, you know, I don't know what I don't know. I've got an idea of how to do this. I've got an idea of how I've trained in the past for stuff like this, but I would just be really curious if you were going to write a program for someone taking this on, what would that look like? So we've worked together for, I guess it's been about 12 weeks now or so. We've got another eight or nine weeks, I think left. And it's basically evolved from establishing a base, which wasn't too challenging because I, I try to stay relatively active as it is, but that base continued to build. And one of the components to that base was hiking, <laughs> of course. So it went from something pretty basic, like a standard one hour hike, which, you know, doesn't necessarily, we've talked about before, anything less than 60 minutes doesn't necessarily require any nutrition during the hike itself. As things go over 60 minutes, then, you know, you you have to start doing that. You can check out the episode where Mark and I talked about endurance fueling to figure that out from a carb standpoint. So it went from 60 minutes to two to three hours to a longer one being five hours with the most recent one being dosed at eight or nine hours. Um, I misread it. I did seven hours, which got me about 20 miles of hiking, four to 5,000 feet of vertical elevation. Now, I knew that as that length of time started to get longer, I needed to probably add in some protein. So let's talk a little bit about when does that point arrive when you really need to start thinking about, okay, not only do I need to be thinking about carbohydrates and timing, but I also need to be thinking about adding in some protein. So let's first talk about Let's first talk about the timing because I think that that's the most relevant. When an endurance endurance training or race or hike or anything like that starts to pile on five consecutive hours, and that consecutive word is important, right? Because sometimes when hiking, like it's an hour and you stop and you hang out and you take in the view or you fish a high mountain lake or you hunt or you glass or whatever, then you get back after it and then you stop and then you get back. We're talking about consecutive pushes at a time. When you start to tap into that five hour mark, that's where we start to say, okay, anything, 
anything above that, if you're planning to continue beyond that, so like this last weekend was seven hours, anything above that five hour mark, you need to be thinking about adding in some protein. The reason for that is twofold. One, you're trying to protect the muscle you've got from being used as energy. And two, you're trying to provide some fuel to recover that muscle for not only the current activity, but we're assuming that you've probably got something the following day, either a recovery hike or maybe you're trying to you know, continue on if you're on a big trip, you're trying to continue on, get more miles under your belt to make it to your destination. But the, the reason for that five hour threshold and the reason for even needing protein is twofold. One, protect the muscle from breakdown and being used as energy or breaking down at all. Two, to recover the muscle for the present activity for the future. So that's important to remember that five hour mark. The amount is what comes next. So this can seem real sciencey. Stay with the podcast if you've made it this far, because we're going to make it a lot easier by the time this is all said and done. The amount is about 0.13 grams per pound of body weight. So for example, what does that look like? For the 150 pound person, we're talking about 20 grams of protein. For the 200 pound person, we're talking about 25, 26 grams of protein, if I, if I did my math right. So it's not a ton, um, but there is that number there, right? So again, let's, let's kind of recap. That five hour mark seems to be kind of that threshold where you need to be thinking about adding some in. It's about 1 point or 0.13 grams per pound of body weight. And I'll put all this in the show notes so you can check it out. Where you need to be thinking about how much of it. What does that mean in layman's terms? That's a good question. If you are doing a multi-leg event and hiking during the day, or doing or running during the day or doing a ski tour during the day, doing any type of distance endurance based activity during the day, you are very likely already doing this by having a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner with protein in it. All right. So if you think about it, those are probably divided up over three times a day in the middle of the summer, it's not impossible for us to get a lot of light. So that'd be, you know, roughly 15 hours. If we look at those three meals and we're assuming five hours between each one. So it's not uncommon to be doing that, meaning you're probably already in doing it. Most people have a source of protein plugged in at breakfast, a source of protein plugged in at lunch, a source of protein plugged in at dinner. So you're already, for the most part, doing that. Less important than that whole 0.13 grams per pound of body weight while you're at blah, all that mess is that you're just simply trying to include a high protein food every four to five hours while you're active. All right, and that can be, you know, as simple as a couple of cheese sticks, some edamame thrown in your trail mix, some protein powder thrown in your oats in the morning, some dehydrated type of meat thrown in your evening meal, a tuna packet or a chicken packet or something else thrown in your lunch, a bag of jerky. The 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 potential possibilities of how you achieve that are endless. But in the world like where we're always trying to and you hear us you hear Mark and I talk about this all the time, in the world where we're always trying to balance optimal with practical, I think taking away the central theme is is the main focus here, right? And basically what all these nuanced numbers is saying is that whenever you're doing really long pushes, every so often you need to be having some source of protein thrown into the mix. That's it. Now, will you reap any sort of significant advantage by detailing it out to the numbers? <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. I, I would I would argue that the average person probably doesn't notice a difference between 20 grams and 15 grams of protein if, if you really calculate those numbers out. And I think, again, the theme is the main point. So let's summarize real quick. This is this was truly a nutrition short. So we're going to summarize what this looks like, some take-home messages, check out the podcast notes so you can actually look at the numbers if you're interested, and then you'll have some nuggets to take for you on your future training events whenever something does start to push beyond the five-hour mark. So here we go. Here's a summary. When the training extends beyond five hours, you need to be thinking about adding a protein. The rough estimate of proteins between 0.13 grams per pound of body weight, roughly, and we're talking about lean mass, not total mass. 
This is particularly true with hiking, ski touring, endurance running, anything to do with the mountains or long distance endurance factors because it's in high intensity and it's also an eccentric, meaning you know, you're know you challenging the muscle. It's in an eccentric type of a um, activity. So that's something else to keep in mind. Very likely that you're already doing this simply by having sources of protein at lunch, breakfast, and dinner. So don't forget to uh, to incorporate those. Any questions, feel free to send them to us at info at v2pnutrition.com. Uh, please feel free to like the show, send us a comment, do anything that helps us grow the show and spread the word and, and do all of those things that uh, you do with, with, um, with podcasts. So we'll be back for a new episode next week. This was just a, a little bonus episode. Have a great week, everyone.